Good evening. Before the Price is Right pricing and recap begins, please join me in a moment of silence for Doug Atkins, who passed away today at the age of 85 years old. He was a defensive end who played for the Cleveland Browns, Chicago Bears, and the New Orleans Saints in the NFL. He also played college football at the University of Tennessee. He died of natural causes at Fort Sanders Regional Medical Center in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I thank Sports Guy 528 for informing me about this sad death. Thank you. And now, on to the recap. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Price is Right Pricing Game Recap for this Wednesday, December 30th, 2015. And today marks the five-year anniversary of when Neil Rocks 87 first started helping me out with the Price is Right Pricing Game Recap. And speaking of him, tomorrow he will have the best of 2015 recap as the best of 2010 was his starting recap. More on his channel tomorrow. Now, this is my final price game recap for 2015. So I'm going to definitely go out on a bang with this. Let's see how the results were from today's show. I just watched it on CBS.com not too long ago, so I know. All right, here are the first four contestants that were called to come on down. The first four were... Monica Logan. David Whipperforth. Mary A. Johnson. And Aaron Robinson. They were the first four contestants on The Price is Right. And today at the handoff... The awesome Amber Lancaster was the model that gave Drew the mic. The first item up for bids was a T-Fall countertop kitchen appliance collection. It included a rice and multi-cooker, a bread maker, an indoor grill, and a 12-piece cookware set modeled by the ravishing Rachel Reynolds. You know, Rock City 7's favorite model, just to remind you one more time for this year. Now on to the bids. Monica, $600. David, $790. Mary, $850. And Aaron, $851. And the actual retail price of the kitchen appliances from T-Fall including the cookware set, was $610. Monica was the first contestant to play a pricing game. And she was playing it up on the turntable. And now for Monica, she was going to have a chance to win a pair of his and her Michael Kors stainless steel watches that were modeled by Amber. Or 
she could also win a new car! It was a Honda CRZ three door hybrid. Came equipped with a 1.5 liter engine, continuously variable transmission, front wheel drive, plus paint and fabric protection. It's the Honda CRZ modeled by Rachel. And Monica's pricing name was any number. Now, the first number in the price of the car was a two. So, for Monica's first selection, she went with six. And six was the fifth and last number in the price of the car. Awesome start. Now, for her second pick, Monica went with the other two. And that other two appeared as... The second number in the price of the car! Oh, man, nice start. She's real hot on getting the numbers in the price of the car. For her third pick, Monica went with eight. Eight was... The third number in the price of the piggy bank. Alright, for the fourth number, well, the four, for her fourth pick, uh, Monica went with three. And three was... The fourth number in the price of the car! Oh, man, she only needs one more number to win that car. She's doing great so far. For her fifth pick, Monica went with five. Five was... the first number in the price of the watches. Okay. At least it wasn't the piggy bank, because if, if that number went there, she did have one spot left for that. For her sixth pick, Monica went with seven. And seven was the second number in the price of the watches. So she was one number away from winning either the watches or the car. And, uh, she still had two numbers to fill in for the piggy bank, but no one wants that when playing any number. <laughs> All right, for her seventh pick, Monica went with one. I had a really good feeling where that number was going to go. When the one lit up on the any number board, it appeared as... Oh, it was the third number. I don't know, there were three numbers in the price of the watches. It def it, you can rule out the piggy bank because she already got the third number for that. So were those watches $751? Well, it turns out that one was the third number in... And the piggy bank contained $9.48. Monica won the Honda CRZ. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And including the kitchen appliances and the cookware set, Monica currently won $22,746 in prizes. Oh, yeah. contestant called to come on down by George Gray was Kimberly 
Ashley Shipman. She was the next contestant on The Price is Right. Now, um, there will be a very interesting fact about Kimberly toward the end of this recap that New York City 7 told me about when I was Skyping with him earlier tonight. But I'll save that to the very end. Okay, the next item up for bids was a Heos by Denon home theater package. It included uh, three uh, sound speakers. One 5.2 channel AV receiver included, modeled by Amber. The bids were Kimberly, $800. David, $1,498. Mary, $1,550. And Aaron, one dollar. And the actual retail price of the home theater package was one thousand five ninety nine. Some of these contestants are giving pretty good bids on the one bids. Monica was off by ten dollars on the first one bid. And Mary, who was the second contestant to play a pricing game, was off by $49. Mary was playing her pricing game at door number two. And Mary was uh, wearing a shirt that read, Pick me? No! Pick my husband! <laughs> Looks like Mary wanted her husband to be the lucky one instead of her. But, hey, she's the one up on stage. So she was the one to play a pricing game. And what Mary had a chance to win, that she could probably split with her husband, was a new game room. It included a flex steel home heavyweight leather sofa, a Golden West Billiard traditional style pool table with deluxe accessory kit included, an Xbox One game package that included the just Dance 2015 and the Crew video games. One console with Kinect, a chat headset, and one controller included. And a Samsung 60-inch high-res LED smart TV, all modeled by Rachel. Mary's pricing game was side by side. The 95 portion of the price were the digits that were to be moved. Mary could either place it on the board's left side to make the price $9,570, or she could place the 95 on the board's right side to make the price $7,095. Mary went with the price of $9,570. I really was thinking $7,095. And when it was time for the actual retail price of the game room to be lit up, was it $9,570? Yes, it was! Mary won the game room! Man, I didn't think she'd get it, but she did! So, uh, something must have made that game room very expensive. Maybe that sofa. Because I don't really, I don't, I ever recognized that sofa on the show before. But anyway, M Mary was a winner. And including the home theater package, Mary currently won $11,169 in prizes. Hey, two for two on pricing game wins. Okay, the next contestant called to come on down was... Carly Dreisler. Her last name is spelled D-R-E-I-Z-L-E-R. -E -E she was the next contestant on The Price is Right. And Carly spells her name K-A-R-L-I. The next item up for bids was behind the giant price tag where Rachel was modeling a Kettler exercise rowing machine and multi-trainer. She uh, did a very good job demonstrating that, that object. The bids were Carly, 
$999. Aaron, $1,149. Kimberly, $850. And David, $851. And the actual retail price of the rowing machine and multi-trainer was $850. $59! Oh. David was the third contestant to play a pricing game, as he was off by only $8! Man, oh man, these are some excellent bids given down at contestants row from today. David was playing his pricing game up on the turntable, and David was wearing a University of Wisconsin t-shirt. And that was pretty much a dead giveaway where he's from. Neil Rock 87's home state of Wisconsin. And that's where I was back in July. And I had a fun time visiting Neil Rock 87's town of Fond du Lac. David is from the state capital of Madison. And now for this Wisconsinite, he was going to have a chance to win... A new washer and dryer and made service for a year. First, it was an LG Direct Drive Ultra Large Capacity Washer and Gas Dryer, two pedestal drawers included, and a Task Rabbit made service for a year, which is for every three weeks. It was all modeled by Amber, a prize worth, and even $5,000. David was playing. Now or then. So the prices of the six grocery items in this playing of now or then either had the now price from December 2015 or the then price, which was from January 2003, almost 13 years ago. Okay, here were the six grocery products. On the top middle, we had a 22-count box of Glad 13-gallon tall kitchen drawstring bags. Price at $4.10. On the top right corner, a 2-ounce container of Blue Star ointment priced at $5.89. On the bottom right corner, a 16-ounce box of Ronzoni Rotini pasta priced at $2.29. On the bottom middle, a 16-ounce bottle of Wishbone Thousand Island Dressing, priced at $3.79. On the bottom left corner, a 96-count pack of Tums Wintergreen Chewable Antacid Tablets, priced at $5.99. And on the top left corner was a 4-ounce can of Ortega Dice Jalapenos. Those are peppers, priced at $1.49. David's first choice was the trash bags. Was the price of $4.10 now or then? David believed it was the now price. And Drew revealed that it was the then price. So that was out. David's next selection was the ointment. Priced at $5.89. David believed that was the then price instead of the now price. And Drew revealed that the Blue Star Ointment's price was... Then! So David got that right, and he could win with the pasta and the Thousand Island dressing. Probably make a good combination of sorts. Uh, David went to the pasta next. He believed the price of $2.29 for that pasta was the now price, and not the then price. Drew revealed that it was... Now! So, David had to get the Thousand Island dressing right in order to win. And if he was not right, he then wouldn't be able to win, because the game would be over. So he had to get this one. The Thousand Island Dressing, priced at $3.79. David believed that was the now price, and not the then price. And Drew revealed that the price of the...
the Thousand Island dressing from Wishbone was... Now! And David won the washer and dryer and made service for a year! Nicely done! And including the rowing machine, David currently won $5,859 in prizes. And we have just completed a perfect first half. Now we're going to find out who would be the first contestant to make it into the showcase with Showcase Showdown number one. David spun the wheel first. And in his first spin, he landed on 75 cents. David chose to stay on that. Mary spun the wheel next, and in her first spin, she landed on 95 cents. And Mary stayed with that, and she became the leader. Monica spun the wheel last, and in her first spin, she landed on 40 cents. She needed to get 55 or 60 cents in her second spin. And adding to the 40 cents from her first spin... Monica got in her second spin. Well, the wheel came close on landing on 60 cents, but it just fell short and it landed on 35 cents for a total of 75 cents. And that was not enough for Monica to defeat Mary with 95 cents. Speaking of Mary, she was headed to the showcase. Mary already won her prize in Side by Side, that new game room. And she will have a chance to win even more prizes coming up in the showcase. Now, if you're like me, who uh, isn't able to watch the prices right on TV nowadays, with the exception of when I have a vacation day off, like yesterday, uh, for full episodes online, go to CBS.com. You catch up right there. Okay, the next contestant called to come on down was Shane Daly. And the next item up for bids was a Danby 129 bottle storage capacity wine cooler modeled by Amber. The bids were Shane, $1,100. Carly, $1,795. Aaron, $782. And Kimberly, $1. And the actual retail price of the wine cooler from Danby was $1,000. $9.99! Carly was the fourth contestant to play a pricing game. And she was playing it at door number two. Carly was wearing a t-shirt, a shirt that read, Hashtag Drew Carey is trending. <laughs> when Carly came on down, Drew found that shirt very amusing. He said that he was trending, and he's already trending. <laughs> now for Carly, she was going to have a chance to win two prizes. They were a trip to Santa Fe, New Mexico, and a trip to New Orleans, Louisiana. First, it was a trip to Santa Fe, that is Round Trip Coach from Los Angeles, for a six-night stay at the El Dorado Hotel and Spa, daily breakfast included, modeled by Amber. And second was a trip to New Orleans, that is Round Trip Coach from Los Angeles, for a six-night stay at the Omni Riverfront, New Orleans. Daily breakfast included, modeled by Rachel, who is from Louisiana. Carly's pricing game was the bargain game, a.k.a. Barker's Bargain Bar. Now, the trip to Santa Fe had a bargain price of $4,278, and 
And the trip to the Big Easy, New Orleans, had a bargain price of $5,022. Carly believed the trip to New Orleans was the bigger bargain. So, we're going to go to Amber first with the trip to Santa Fe. Bargain price, $4,278. Actual retail price? Four thousand nine seventy eight for a difference of seven hundred dollars. Now over to Rachel with the trip to New Orleans. Bargain price five thousand twenty two. Actual retail price four thousand nine seventy two for a difference of. $1,400! Carly won both the trip to Santa Fe and New Orleans. Oh, those are going to be some very nice trips she's going to be going on. They totaled $11,400. And including her one big prize of the wine cooler, Carly currently won $13,399 in prizes. And that's our fourth straight win of the day. Ooh. <laughs> Isn't this something? Okay, the next contestant called to come on down was... Melissa Weber. The next item up for bids was presented by Rachel in the middle of Bidder's Row, and she had with her an 8 gig Dell laptop computer. And I believe George mentioned in the description that it can be converted into a tablet. That's really awesome. Here are the bids Melissa, $550. Aaron, $595. Kimberly, $650. And Shane, $1,100. And the actual retail price of the Dell laptop computer was $1,300. Shane, who was off by $200, was the fifth contestant to play a pricing game. And he joined Drew up on stage. And for Shane, he was now going to have a chance to win a new car! And it was a Nissan Juke SV. It came equipped with a 1.6 liter engine, continuously variable transmission, splash guards, all-wheel drive, plus paint and fabric protection. It's the Nissan Juke modeled by Amber. And Shane's pricing game was Pathfinder. Now, the first number of the price of the Nissan Juke that Shane stepped on was... 2. And Rachel was in charge of modeling the three small prizes. They were a Skill 4-volt electric screwdriver. The brand Skill is spelled with 1L. A KitchenAid electric kettle and a Black & Decker steam iron. Okay, so for the second number, it was either the zero on Shane's left, the two in front of him, the one on his right, or the three behind him. Shane stepped to the three. Was the second number three? It was! So Shane did not make a mistake on that number. Great start. So $23,000 Nissan Juke was on the line for him. Now for the third number. It was either the 6 on his left, the 4 on his right, or the 9 behind him. Shane stepped to the 6. Was the third number 6? either the 
zero in front of him, the seven on his left, or the eight behind him? Shane stepped to the eight. Was the fourth number eight? Oh my god, it was! Oh, I don't believe this! Shane has gotten the second, the third, and the fourth numbers right without making a single mistake! Oh my gosh! This is absolutely amazing! Now, it all came down to the last number. Shane had a 50-50 chance of getting it right or getting it wrong. And if he ended up getting it wrong, he still had his three do-overs. But uh, as history has shown, one contestant uh, during season 38, which was one of my earlier recaps, was perfect right up to the last number. And... I'd like to mention that that contestant did not get the number right, and he blew it on the three do-over prizes. That was absolutely, absolutely heartbreaking. Hopefully it didn't happen to Shane today. Now the last number in the price of this Nissan Juke SV was either the 5 on his left or the 9 on his right. Shane... Stepped over to the 9. So, if the Nissan Juke was $23,689, Shane would win that Nissan Juke without making a single mistake. If the 9 was not the number, then we knew $23,685 was the actual retail price. And in order for Shane to step on the five, if that was the last number and not the nine, he'd have to get one of the three small prizes right. All right. Was nine the last number in the price of the Nissan Juke SV? So Shane stepped over to his right, believing nine was it. He did not step to the left, believing that it was five. Twenty-three thousand six eighty-nine. Well, it sounds like a decent price, but was it the right price? All right. Was nine the last number in the price of the Nissan Juke? Turned out that it was Oh man. Is it really going to end like this? I don't know what to tell you folks. The last number was Nine! Shane got it! Shane got it! Oh my gosh! Shane won the Nissan Juke in a perfect plane of Pathfinder! Oh my gosh! Man, oh man, that absolutely surprised me! Man! 23689 was the actual retail price! Holy smokes! Man! What perfection that was! Oh my gosh! Man, oh man! And including the laptop, uh, Shane currently won $24,989 in prizes. I, now, Neil Rock City 7 is going to take care of the... Uh, of the recap tomorrow, as you all know, and there will be no show on Friday because it will be New Year's Day, but rest assured, if he gives out the wins of the week, this is guaranteed to be, uh, be one of them. And this was the fifth win of the day. I don't want to jinx anything, but uh, 
We may be on the verge of a, something called a PS. Pretty much know what that means, folks. Well, sad to say that I have reached the point of the recap where I mentioned the final contestant that was called to come on down from today's show. The final contestant called to come on down was... Karen Schaefer! She was the next contestant on The Price is Right. Uh, the last item up for bids today was a Hatteras Hammocks Deluxe Hand Woven Hammock, modeled by Amber. The bids were... Karen, $850. Melissa, $785. Aaron, $900. And Kimberly, $901. And all four bids were locked in. $785. All the bids had to be erased. And everyone had to start again by going lower than $785. Alright, so... Take two. Karen, $550. Melissa, $650. Aaron, $459. And Kimberly, $651. And the actual retail price of the hammock from Hatteras Hammocks was $735. Kimberly was the sixth and final contestant to play a pricing game. And Kimberly was playing it up on the turntable. Now the prize Kimberly had a chance to win was a new outdoor barbecue island. It was a cow flame granite outdoor barbecue kitchen island. It included a spacious cooking area, grill, refrigerator, and elevated bar for seating. One robotic grill cleaner included, modeled by Rachel. Kimberly was playing... Check game. It's been a while since that game has appeared, but it was nice to see it being played today. So we pretty much know how this works, folks. Works, folks. <laughs> Kimberly's going to write a check amount, and the amount in the check will be added to the price of the prize, and it has to total at least $7,000, but not over $8,000. Alright, so when Drew gave Kimberly the pen to write out that check, Kimberly wrote the check for the amount of $2,300. So, Kimberly wrote the check out for $2,300, like I said. And now it was time for Rachel to reveal the actual retail price. In order for Kimberly to win, that outdoor barbecue kitchen island had to be at least $4,700, but no more than $5,700. It did look like a very nice outdoor barbecue island, I must say. In a way, I kind of felt $2,300 may have been a little too high. Um, and, uh, I'd like to point out that we do have a perfect show on the line. That's what I initialed PS earlier. So far, we've gotten five out of five games won. Could Kimberly make it six out of six? Well, let's see. 
Kimberly wrote the check out for $2,300. The actual retail price of the outdoor barbecue kitchen island that Rachel revealed was... Remember, it has to be... It had to be at least $4,700, but no more than $5,700. Because, again, the rule states, it has the, um, the total has to be at least $7,000, but not over $8,000. But I do miss the, miss the good old days when it used to be between $5,000 to $6,000. But in the very beginning of the game, uh, back in the 80s, when it was known as Blank Check, um, I believe the toll had to be between $3,000 to $3,500. I don't know what, what your opinion is. Which do you like better? The rule of between $3,000 to $3,500? The rule of between $5,000 to $6,000? Or the rule of $7,000 to $8,000? I personally like the $5,000 to $6,000 rule. I don't know. I'm, I'm, just that, <laughs> I'm just that kind of guy. All right, I, I, I've probably done enough stalling right now, so I'll give you the actual retail price of the uh, outdoor barbecue kitchen island from Calflin that Rachel revealed. Uh, the check, once again, Kimberly wrote out for $2,300. And the actual retail price of the outdoor barbecue kitchen island was $5,129. And that was a total of, <laughs> oh boy, $7,429! Kimberly won the Outdoor Barbecue Island plus $2,300 in cash that Amber presented to Kimberly, and that means a 6 out of 6 day! Yes! 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 Perfect show! Woohoo! And including the hammock, Kimberly currently won $8,164 in cash and prizes. Kimberly made it a perfect show! Woohoo! Oh, <laughs> man. This is. Oh, oh! <laughs> I I got a little too excited there. <laughs> I my finger slipped on my recorder. <laughs> well, that was the only sound of the losing horns you'll hear on this recap tonight. Not from the contestants who won their pricing games. Oh man, six out of six! What a rarity these days. All right, now it's time to find out who would be joining Mary in the showcase with Showcase Showdown number two. Kimberly spun the wheel first. And um, I guess I might as well acknowledge it now. Uh, Drew mentioned that Kimberly was on the show 11 years ago, back on September 30th, 2004. And New Rock City 7 was bringing this to my attention earlier during uh, my Skype chat I had with him. Kimberly won a Chevrolet Aveo LS playing the retired pricing game on the spot. So, this was Kimberly's second time as a contestant on the show. And uh, New Rock City 7 also pointed out to me that during the closed captioning for the... On the second half of the show, they showed a clip of Kimberly with Bob. That was very nice. Uh, for Kimberly, she got in her first spin 65 cents. It looked like Kimberly was going to spin again, but she decided to stay on the 65 cents. Might have been a wise choice. Let's see how Carly did in her spin of the wheel. For her first spin, Carly landed on 55 cents. So Carly needed to get at least a dime, but no more than 45 cents. And adding to the 55 cents from her first spin, Carly got in her second spin 50 cents for a total of $1.05. Carly.
Kelly went over by one nickel. Shane spun the wheel last. And for his first spin, he landed on a dime. Ten cents. He had to get at least 55 cents, but no more than 90 cents in his second spin. And adding to the dime from his first spin, Shane got in his second spin a quarter, 25 cents, for a total of 35 cents. And that was not enough to defeat Kimberly with her 65 cents. And that meant Kimberly was headed to the showcase. Eleven years ago, she actually did not win her way into the showcase, even though she won uh, the Chevy Avail playing on the spot. And now, eleven years later, Kimberly will have a chance to win even more prizes in the showcase. Well, we'll see how things went for her. So far, she already won a outdoor kitchen island and twenty-three hundred dollars in cash playing checking. Now for the showcases. The top winner in today's showcase was Mary. The runner-up was Kimberly. Showcase number one. Uh, the theme of the prizes in this showcase was... I'm going to put it as this. The show of showcases. Uh, show was the theme for the showcase. It started off with a trip to New York City for two... Round trip coach in Los Angeles for a six night stay in a, in a studio suite at 50 NYC and a Finia hotel. Daily breakfast plus two orchestra level Broadway show tickets included. And the Broadway show in particular was uh, Kinky Boots, I believe. Next was a pair of HTC 32 gig smartphones. The trip to New York City. And the smartphones were modeled by Amber. The trip to NYC appeared at door number four in the background. And last was, get this. This is pretty nice. A Buick Encore SUV. Came equipped with a 1.4 liter engine, six-speed automatic transmission, front-wheel drive, plus all-weather floor mats, and rear cargo net. Modeled by Rachel. So it's a trip to New York City. A pair of smartphones and a new Buick Encore SUV. And this showcase can either be for Mary or Kimberly if the price is right. And if either one of those ladies wins that showcase, they will definitely get an Encore. <laughs> By applause, I mean. Uh, Mary chose to bid on this showcase instead of passing it to Kimberly. I really do not blame her. Mary gave a bid of $24,500. I found that to be a little low, because we're dealing with a Buick here. Uh, now for showcase number two, the theme of the prizes in this showcase for Kimberly was Hog Heaven. And it started off with a prize that is nicknamed a hog. A Harley Davidson Sportster Super Low Motorcycle, one helmet included, modeled by Rachel. And second was a Bayliner 175 Bowrider Ski Boat with trailer included, modeled by Amber. So, simple showcase here. A new motorcycle and a new ski boat. This showcase can all be for Kimberly if the price is right. And Kimberly gave a bid of $28,975. Okay. When the show came back from its final commercial break, it was time for the showcase reveal. Drew went to Mary first. Mary bid $24,500. The actual retail price of Mary's showcase was... <clears throat> like I said, we were dealing with a Buick in this showcase. $35,331. For a difference of $10,831. And Drew claimed that Buick was not her father's Buick. Just like in that commercial. Okay, now over to Kimberly. Kimberly bid $28,975.
The actual retail price of Kimberly's showcase was... Well, 11 years ago, she didn't make it into the showcase. That was back in 2004. Here in 2015, the actual retail price for her was... 30268 for a difference of... $1,293! Kimberly won her showcase! Oh, man! What a day Kimberly had! Today, Kimberly won a grand total in cash and prizes of $38,432! Hey, what? <laughs> How amazing is that? Being on the prices right 11 years ago and then coming back 11 years later to win basically almost every, almost everything. <laughs> Man, so on this second to last day of 2015, we went 6 out of 6. A perfect show for pricing games. So all 6 contestants are the MVPs of the prices right. They are Monica. Mary, David, Carly, Shane, and Kimberly. Now, the following acknowledgement is from BJMTV Canada's own Ben Mason. Hold on. Wait. Two straight Pathfinder wins without mistakes? How did that happen? The last time that Pathfinder had at least two perfect wins in a season happened in season... 34. That absolutely was a big surprise from today's show. A perfect Pathfinder play. Incredible. Just incredible. Price is Right Pricing Game Recap this week was sponsored by Samuel Adams Winter Lager. And since Neorox 87 is closing out 2015 tomorrow... Let me give you my first sponsor spoiler that huh, this will be the first sponsor for 2016. For the first week of pricing game recaps on my channel for 2016, the sponsor will be from Mortal Kombat X. So, don't mean again to sound like a broken record, but New York City 7 will be ending the month and the year with tomorrow's Best of 2015 show. This is a pretty good year uh, for Price is Right. Uh, a lot of exciting moments took place. Um, too many to name, but one I can say right off the bat is uh, last week, Triple Play finally got one for the first time in over eight years. That was definitely a win we were all waiting to see happen again. So, uh, on New Year's Eve for tomorrow, my advice to you is to be safe. Don't drink and drive. <laughs> if you're, if you're going to celebrate um, uh, in Times Square to see the ball drop, be very careful. And I um, just want to thank you all for inviting me onto your devices uh, throughout the past year. And until 2016... Don't forget to help control the pet population by having your pets spayed or neutered. I'm going to get a bottle opener and drink this. And I say to end this recap, this is Mr. Horgan wishing you all a very happy new year. 